Think about this. If we are saved through connecting with Jesus by faith, then isn't the whole quality of our life going to be determined by staying connected with Jesus by faith? Now, that makes a lot of sense to me now, but when I was a young Christian, I didn't put two and two together. It's the simple mathematics. You, here I am. I'm one. He's the great one. We need to stay connected for me to be able to operate like I ought to. And in fact, Jesus put that to his disciples. One of his most important teachers, surely, is I am the vine. And he says, as the vine, John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. Repeat after me. We are the branches. Okay. He who abides in me, Jesus says, and I in him bears much fruit. Now, much fruit can mean that the works that we're trying to do actually get blessed by God. And so they're going well and they're becoming productive, whether it's fruit in Christian ministry or fruit in the kinds of things that God leads us to do out in the world, serving other people or making a living for ourselves, whatever it may be like that, the fruit of growing our family well and seeing all of these things blessed by the hand of God, but it is also going to be the fruit of his spirit. We bear much fruit of the spirit, the peace, the love, the joy, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that make a life worth living. Wow. And all of that comes, as he said, by abiding in him, by staying connected to him, in my translation. And then he says, oh boy, the zinger, for without me, you can do nothing. Now that's Jesus's word on the subject. Without him, we can do nothing. I don't think we get it. We keep trying to do all kinds of things without him. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we're not going to be able to see our Christian works flourish. We're not going to be able to see our works in the world flourish. We're not going to be able to see our life come out the way we need it to and our families grow up the way they need to under our care, and we're certainly not going to see the fruit of peace and love and joy flowing through us in anything like the quantities that we would like if we don't abide in him. Because apart from him, we can do what? What was that? Nothing. That's exactly what he said. Nothing. You can look it up in Greek. You can look it up in Hebrew. You can look it up in Russian. It's still yet nada. <laughs> nothing. And um, that's a pretty strong statement by the God who loves us. And it tells me right away that he's not trying to build up my self-esteem. He's just trying to let me know what reality is so I can enter into it and, and not be blown this way and that, but realize I better stay tethered to Jesus. And I've got an example of this. Uh, because I'm a former carpenter and I love my power tools. Now, here's one right here. I, you don't have to know who makes it, but this is just like one of the joys of my working life. When, when uh, I'm no longer working as a carpenter for money, I'm doing it for fun around the house, fixing things and making stuff. And so I like to have a tool that works, and this one works in reverse. It works forward. It's got fast forward. It's a great tool. Now, think of yourself as a new creation, as a product designed by God off the heavenly assembly line. He's made you just what you need to be. He's put into you. Everything that you need, you've got built into your purpose and you've got built into your gifts. You've got the right kind of covering and coating on you from his grace and the blood of Jesus and his love for you. He's given you personality and vision and it's all these wonderful things. And none of them will work right if you are disconnected from the power source. Okay, let's see. Nope, can't get a hurricane get energy, a bit of juice out of this thing. It's absolutely a perfect creation, but it's got to be plugged in to operate. And it's the same way with you and me. We're absolutely great in the what he's made us, and people are wondering, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you, dear Christian, except that you keep getting disconnected from the Lord, and, and no wonder you, 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 things aren't be working out. The greatest mistake any of us can do is to live for ourselves rather than for Jesus. That's an immediate disconnect at the most fundamental level. But if we get an idea of something that we think the Lord wants us to do and we go running off, well, do we need to let him stay in the lead? And no matter what it is, it's going to go better with prayer. So I teach this principle at a school of recovering alcoholics and crack addicts. And... Um, 
we call it the Urban Training Institute of the Old Savannah City Mission. And what I've learned over a period of time, I used to think that what the folks needed, because they were broken deep down inside, they've got terrible wounds inside of them. Many times they don't even know what they are, but nobody goes that far off the rails without having crippling hurts and injuries on the inside, making you act out, making you want to find the answer in the wrong places. Okay, so I thought inner healing was what they needed, and what I've discovered again and again was what they needed the most instruction on was this principle of staying connected to the Lord. And, and, I, and, and as I began working with them, I began discovering something about myself, that years ago when I came to faith in Christ, it was um, September 29th, 1982, yes, I remember it well, and um, getting a little fuzzy on the date, obviously, but just the same, I discovered, Jesus, I want to live from you from now on, and then in the days afterwards, I discovered how hard it was to really stay connected to him, I said, what have you got for me? You've got to have something really good that will keep me connected, because obviously, my mind wanders off, I wander off. And if I don't stay connected to you, this thing is not going to work right because I need you every hour. And so he began to show me. I won't say that he sat me down and explained these things to me, but over a period of time, he taught me the principle of staying connected to him outside of the context of John 15. I, I, I put two and two together much later on that score. But he was showing me the big five. You see him right there? The big five, the digits. How do you want to get a grip on Jesus? How do you want to get a grip, good grip on God and his grace? You need the big five. The big five are the things that Jesus himself did in order to stay connected to his Father. The big five are the things that every Christian needs to do in order to stay connected to our Heavenly Lord. And the big five are Bible, that's the big one, touches all of them, prayer, pointing up to God, worship, the middle finger, the strongest, um, Okay, fellowship and service. That's reaching for others when you when you have that whole hand put back together like that. And so let me open this up for you. Jesus did the big five. He knew the word front and back. He read the word. He studied it. He lived it. He prayed constantly. He got up early to pray if he had a busy day coming. Um, I'm not quite following him in that footstep yet, but <laughs> I get up and I pray and then I run to catch up with the day that's already begun um, sometimes, but that's the Bible, the prayer, worship, and I don't mean just going to church. I never tell them church because you and I know that you can go to church on a let's pretend basis. You can go to church on just punching the clock basis, but worship, whether it takes place at church, ideally it's there because at church you get the fellowship also, you get the word also, you get the benefit of other people's prayers also, and you have opportunities for service. So church puts all five together for you. But worship, whether it takes place in church or whether it takes place giving thanks and praise to him, entering into worship there, that's what cleanses us again and again and reconnects us with the joy and with the sublime inner sense of being loved by this amazing God. And then there's Fellowship, and that doesn't mean just having a Twinkie and a coffee after church. Uh, it, 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 that's a part of it. If you, if you can actually turn to that into fellowship, you're doing, you're doing good, but it's fellowship at a low level. Fellowship at a quality level is having spiritual friends in Christ that you open yourself up to for fun and also for review and for sharing how you're coming along. These are people moving in the same direction, wanting to get closer to God, and you're learning from them, they're learning from you, but you're also calling each other out if you see each other stepping wrong. So you're you're helping the situation and you're staying refreshed because you're having fun talking over the great things that God's doing in your life. Or you're staying encouraged when he's not, doesn't seem to be doing good things, but you've got your friend to call on and say, pray for me. And then finally, there's service. You know, none of us were meant to live for the almighty dollar or the almighty yen or whatever it is in whatever country you're from. We were meant to live for the Almighty God. And so there has to be places in our life where we do what we do as unto the Lord and only for Him and only for His approval and only for knowing that He sees and He will reward us. And that grooms through the way that we do things because it keeps reminding us again and again that if I'm doing it for God, I've got to represent Him. I've got to represent Him. I've got to present what He is like to the people that I'm serving. I can't be 
this or that that I might be able to get away with in the business world or in regular civil society, which isn't always so civil. And so these are 